Epic Store added support for Indian rupees. Far Cry 6 release date has been leaked and Cyberpunk 2077 has updated their system requirements. Hey what's up everybody, my name is Gil Menes and here are the top gaming news of the week. The Epic Games Store has now added the support for Indian rupees. Now the store will show INR values on the games, although that doesn't mean there's original pricing like Steam. Earlier, Epic told that INR pricing will be coming next year, but instead, it is already here. Talk about surprise. The payment methods unfortunately remains the same, so you cannot pay using Paytm or even cash mode, something like Steam is able to provide at the moment. To compare it with Steam, they started showing INR pricing in late 2015 and then more payments options were added in 2016, including cash on delivery. Steam has also allowed devs to let players in many countries to buy games at original pricing, meaning that they get to buy the games at lower prices. The best example is how the medium game, which is available for $45 originally, we in India can buy the game for only 9.89 rupees. And if we convert that, it is very much close to $15. Now, how long will it take for Epic Games to have original pricing is unknown. And to be honest, I don't know if they will ever add original pricing to their store. Even though it's great to have INR supports that has been added, but there is more that needs to be added and one of them being payment methods. Because I don't have a credit card and not everybody has PayPal accounts, so it's hard for everyone in India to buy games from Epic Store. But if they updated their payment methods, maybe people will buy. What do you guys think of Epic Games Store? Let me know in the comments below. World of Warcraft games designer Chris Kaleki has left Blizzard after serving 13 years. He posted a video on YouTube explaining why he left Blizzard. He says that he was unhappy with the current state of the game. He believes that in a classic version of the game, the guild is a big deal. That creates interdependence among players to work together to be successful. The modern vision of the game, however, reduces the importance of guilds for those who want to experience WoW solo or don't want to deal with bossy guild leaders. In that way, a focus on players is lost and is replaced by focus on NPCs and their stories. He believes that the players are the game's stories and not its NPCs. He also mentioned that the game is focused on things such as progression systems and engagement and suggests that it should rather focus on more important things such as guild system which is a core feature of the game. It's not a bad change, it's one of those things that people actually wanted to have but you can clearly see that disconnection between the classic version and the in modern vision of the game. And this is something that Chris did not like and that is one of his main reasons why he left Blizzard. To be honest, if you're working on a game that you built from the ground up and you have certain systems and later on in the future those systems are changed, of course you will like your own system that you built in the game. As of right now, World of Warcraft Shadowlands expansion has more pre-sales than any other expansion in the game's history. Shadowlands will be going live today in its 16 year anniversary. Assassin's Creed Valhalla released earlier this month and was one of the most anticipated games of the month and now it is being told that Valhalla is Ubisoft's biggest PC launch ever. Valhalla doubled Odyssey's day one player count as well. Ubisoft said that Valhalla has sold more copies than any other Assassin's Creed game. The game also has received positive response all over the world with some considering this as the best Assassin's Creed game of all time. But one thing is for sure, that this game has improved over Odyssey in a big way. And can I just say that this game looks absolutely beautiful? The amount of detail in this game is next level for an Assassin's Creed game. Speaking of Ubisoft games, Far Cry 6 which was earlier delayed due to pandemic to an unspecified date and will be releasing sometime in the fiscal year of 2021, apparently now has a leaked release date. This comes from Microsoft Store saying that the game will release on May 26th at 5am in India with a $60 price tag. Very specific indeed and it also lands in the fiscal year of 2021 which starts from April. Now again, this has not been official from Ubisoft themselves, so you should take this with a pinch of salt, but it's wild that there is a time mentioned in there as well. For now, I'm excited with the teaser that they showed for Far Cry 6. Maybe later down in the line, I need to see some gameplay trailers and more things about Far Cry 6 to be actually excited to play that game. Well, Ubisoft's news doesn't stop right here because Ubisoft has removed the managing director of Skull & Bone Studio in Singapore, Hugo's Recall, following a leadership audit that was performed earlier. 
Record was one of many names outed in Gamma Sutra investigation into Ubisoft's culture of abuse and misconduct back in August. The Singapore studio was blasted for its openly racist, sexist conduct and abusive behavior from its staff members. The company has already got rid of a creative director of Valhalla and also the former chief creative officer. Skull and Bones was announced back in 2017 and after that nothing has been shown. It was reported although that the game has gone a drastic rework to have a Fortnite style live service game. So what does the future of Skull and Bones hold? It is very much unknown. One of the things that Xbox has an advantage over PlayStation is its Game Pass service that allows you to play even some of the latest games with a subscription service. However, PlayStation has now a response to that. Jim Ryan, the CEO of PlayStation, has given a response to Xbox Game Pass system, saying that there is actually news to come, just not today. Now that's an interesting statement because Ryan earlier told that PlayStation cannot have that kind of system because studios pay millions and millions of dollars to work on the game and also spend so many years building that game up. So for them it doesn't make sense to put that game into a Game Pass subscription service. But now that Xbox Game Pass is really rising, I guess Sony wants to put some kind of system in. It would be interesting to see that in the end they included a subscription of their own, but then again it can also work against them. Speaking of implementing something, Steam has added additional support to the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. The additional support includes LED trackpad rumble and gyro functionality and also added a directional swipe mode for gyro and trackpads. Now this is added in Steam Client Beta and there are more things that Valve has to go around. Users have reported that the rumble works only when the controller is wired and also the on-screen buttons still show Xbox icons but it's good to see that Valve is right now in support for making DualSense working as quick as possible. Call of the Seas finally has a release date and will be coming out in December 8th, two days before Cyberpunk and it will be available on Xbox Game Pass as well as Steam and Microsoft Store. Call of the Sea is a love letter to the adventures genre about one woman's search for her missing husband in the uncharted reaches of the South Pacific. You will unearth the remnants of a lost civilization, investigate clues and solve a variety of clever puzzles to piece together the fate of your husband's expedition. The game is built in Unreal Engine 4 and will be tasking players with investigative clues that were left behind by previous inhabitants of the islands with a variety of puzzle solving. One of my favorite things is the game's voice actor who is playing the female protagonist who is the wife of the missing husband. She has also voice for games like Firewatch, The Walking Dead and Life is Strange. Also it calls out to people who have played Sea of Thieves because the art style is somewhat similar to that game as well. The game actually looks interesting and even you can check out the trailer if you want to see if that game is for you or not. Cyberpunk 2077 came up with the latest and final trailer for the game that's coming out in December 10th and they also showed how you will be playing Keanu Reeves character Johnny Silverhand for a brief moment to see how he died. Not only that, Cyberpunk has also released an updated system requirement for their game. They previously released a system requirement which confused people whether it is true or not somehow and now they have updated it and added more options. You will be able to play the game in low settings at 1080p with GTX 780 and an i5-3570K processor or AMD FX8310 with GTX 1060 and i7-4790 or Ryzen 3 3200G, you can play the game in high settings at 1080p. Now they have added more options such as playing at 1440p high settings, Ultra with 2160p and also RTX options. Now that is a definite proof that my 1050 Ti can easily play Cyberpunk 2077. Not easily but at least medium to high, maybe low to medium, at least I can play the game. As of right now, Cyberpunk's release date has not moved and by the looks of it, it will release on 10th and I'm excited to play this game. You can buy this game for only 2500 on Games The Shop and you can also get a free t-shirt from it. So it's a, it's a win-win. Also the biggest news came out from IO Interactive, the same studio who has made the very popular Hitman franchise as they bring their brand new project of 007 himself. A short teaser came upon for 007 and man, the music. I really love the music. The website says that you will be stepping into an origin story of James Bond featuring a completely new James Bond story. This game won't be linked in any way to the movies where at the moment James Bond is being played by Daniel Craig. That man is awesome by the way. 
I believe this is the best studio to work on a James Bond game because in some ways Hitman and James Bond are very similar with the similar styles so I cannot wait for this game to come out. Even though it's very early to say how the game will be because I guess they are into production or something but excited for sure. Well this was top gaming news of the week, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, if you did leave a like and comment down below what do you think about any of the news we just discussed and also to keep up with new content, community events and tournaments, subscribe to Gaming Connect, do not miss a single thing.